the greatest candle makers execute their temperature management plan to perfection. Today, I want to share four rules you should always follow almost all of the time when managing heat. But first, let's dive into the foundational elements of a good temperature management plan. Stick it out to the end if you want a discount on my online course. But today's episode is all about thermodynamics. Every candle lives or dies by the temperatures that make it possible and candle makers learn to control heat through every stage of a candle's life cycle. Everything from the start where you melt down the wax and raise it to some max temperature to when you add the fragrance oil to when you pour it into a glass to when you cure it in some room. You see the right temperature leads to beautiful candles but if you screw a few things up you may end up in a difficult place and require a heat gun to fix it. The first rule to follow is that you should only use one method of measurement when making a candle. Most candle makers use one of two different methods to measure temperature, either a glass thermometer or an IR thermometer. A glass thermometer has a bulb at the bottom that reacts to the presence of some heat somewhere and it raises. This is just the classic thing that you've seen all over the place. You probably have one in your kitchen. And an IR thermometer shoots infrared energy at an object and receives some signal and measures it. It's very scientific and complicated and much too complicated for me to explain here, as in I don't really know how it works. But it's awesome because you just point and click and you get a temperature back. And these are the thermometers we've seen all over 2020 where we aim them at people's foreheads and try to measure the temperature. They're both fine to use. One is not better than the other. It really comes down to what your preference is, but I'm suggesting that you pick one and stick with it. See, in melted wax, I could use a glass thermometer to measure it and then use an IR and get a completely different number. The difference is they usually come from the tool and the nuances associated with it. One is submerged and one is shooting at the surface. And I usually trust that a five degree drop as measured by one tool is five degrees. The heart of this rule is to stay consistent with whichever method you choose to use. The second rule today is keep your wax below 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Raising your wax above 200 for too long will cause scorching, which is discoloration or actually damaging the physical structure of the wax. And this can impact your oil retention, which could impact the safety of your candle and the performance of your candle. If you go over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, don't freak out. It's actually okay, but don't do it too long or too often. Really, it shouldn't be that hard if you're attentive to your wax. The one exception to the 200 degrees Fahrenheit rule is palm wax. You see, palm has a very high melt point and it really enjoys those higher temperatures because as candle makers, we want to cool it for as long as possible, as far as possible. And so we heat it to 200 degrees, 205 degrees Fahrenheit in order to add our fragrance oil and then cool it as slow as possible. Our third rule is to stir before taking any measurements. In any given wax, depending on how you're heating it, there's going to be hot spots and cold spots. By stirring prior to taking a measurement, you ensure that you're going to get an average temperature throughout. Now, some people will suggest you can use a microwave to melt down your wax. And that's a big problem because it's really inconsistent. You're going to have hot spots and very cold spots inside your wax and it might not melt very consistently. So I really encourage you to not use a microwave whenever possible. I know it's convenient, but really go for other methods. If you're using an IR thermometer, I found I get the best results when I shoot at the middle of the wax or the deepest part of the wax after I've stirred. With a glass thermometer, I found that stirring, you can stir it with the glass thermometer and then take your reading at that point too. My last rule is don't be afraid to take your wax and put it back on the heat if you need to. For almost every wax, I recommend heating to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 degrees Celsius, and then add your fragrance oil and then stir for one to two minutes. Now, adding a cooler liquid like the fragrance oil to a warmer liquid will sap some of the heat and potentially drop your blend below where you wanted to pour. Maybe not then this doesn't apply because if you're pouring very cool, then this actually does kind of help you. But if you drop below your proposed pour temp, say you wanted to pour at 170 degrees Fahrenheit and after stirring and adding fragrance, you were down at 160, 165, it's okay to take your wax blend and place it back on the heat source. With a lot of our candle designs, it's super sensitive to what we pour at, what temperature we pour at. And so being able to micromanage those therms is really critical to making sure that you have the best looking candle possible. And so if you find that you took your wax off, you added your fragrance oil and it cooled too long, just put it back on the heat, watch it closely, 
and then take it off once you're ready to pour. I cover heat management and more in my beginner's online course. If you're interested in a discount just for being an awesome viewer, I've got a link in the description below. Otherwise, that's all I have. Those are my four rules to follow. There's certainly more nuances to it than that, but I think these are good starting points. If you found any of this helpful or insightful, leave me a like. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll get to it as soon as possible. Otherwise, I hope you make beautiful candles. I hope you have a great week and I will see you in the next episode.